This past week, uh, I had, uh, I, I guess, some highlights. There's always, as I mentioned earlier, in any given week, you might be up at one point and down at another. Uh, but as I was uh, trying to watch the news and try to figure out when I could get my uh, first COVID vaccine shot, I, I was uh, reading through all the different language that was out there about uh, eligibility. And it's so crazy, right, that, that there are so many different um, interpretations of what is out there and, and how each state or each governor uh, is really the one that kind of determines how to interpret that for any particular state. So uh, I was trying to figure that out just for as far as clergy, uh, if I could get a shot. I think all clergy should have gotten one in the first round, but that wasn't the case. In fact, it's still not the case. Um, and so I was just kind of watching that. But when I noticed that the uh, governor, I believe it was on Tuesday, uh, changed his uh, or, or increased or expanded the eligibility, I thought, wow, this is great. Th this gives me an opportunity. So I combed back through them and was looking at the eligibility requirements. And, uh, and, and in our state, pretty much anybody can get one now, right? Uh, because whenever they went from obesity to overweight, and went from diabetes one to diabetes two. And I mean, that pretty much covers our state. We are no longer the, the most obese or overweight state. I think at one point Mississippi was winning, uh, if, if you can call it winning. And then I think Oklahoma of all states beat them out. So we were always number two in terms of the fattest state. We might be getting back up there, but anyway, so when the governor expanded, it was kind of like he, he was saying, okay, everybody in our state is going to be able to get it. But clergy were still not listed on there as like a first responder or even being essential. But I did see mine on there. Uh, I have an autoimmune disease. I take an immunosuppressant. And I thought, that's it. If there's anything good about having ulcerative chronic colitis, that is it. Uh, and so I was able to, to get my shot. And I, I remember going um, out there to the fairgrounds. I was looking at different places where I could go. And uh, so I drove up and I got in line and there wasn't a huge crowd out there, but there were a number of cars ahead of me. And as I started to, to make my way up, there was a National uh, Guard person that was there getting the information. And, and I still didn't think I was going to be able to make it because uh, he had, uh, you know, information he was going through, and I thought, well, I, didn't, I don't really know if I'm going to be eligible or not. But as I got up there to the line, as I pulled up under the tent, uh, the person there started asking me a lot of questions. And, and again, I just thought, and at one point he said, I'm sorry, but uh, he asked me what my BMI was. And I had to think about that for a minute. Your body mass index. And so I didn't meet that requirement. Um, and as he was asking the questions and I was able to tell him, you know, what I thought my eligibility was. And so he said, that's it. As of today, I can do that. And so he went, he went and got the syringe and uh, uh, gave it to me. And honestly, I didn't even feel it. It just went in my arm. And uh, next thing I knew, he said, okay, if you'll just pull right up. And uh, we want you to wait 15 minutes. Just drive up and wait there. If you start to feel like uh, you're, you're not doing well, just honk your horn. And I didn't hear anybody honking their horn, so I thought, this is good. So I pulled right up and started to wait my 15 minutes. And as I was sitting there, uh, I was just overwhelmed with emotion. I started to uh, feel this weight lifted off my shoulders, this, this weight of anxiety about getting COVID-19, as I think we all have felt and experienced. And the uh, sense of relief that finally, finally I've been able to get the first shot of this vaccine and that there is truly a light at the end of the tunnel just to, to know that there is a sense of healing that is already taking place as this medicine, uh, this vaccine is going into my body. And then a sense of gratitude, just being so thankful. And I remember just saying, thank you, God, for allowing this vaccine to even exist so that we can, even though there have been 530,000 people that have died from it, 
that there is hope for the rest of us in our community and in our world that we could have healing and be able to get through this. And as I was feeling these emotions, I looked around and there were cars lined up on the side, everybody sitting there doing the same thing, although the guy next to me was smoking, you know, nonstop. I thought, well, he's got more problems. But anyway, um, I, I, I thought, wow, and it's not just me that, that feels this relief. Everybody that was out there in the parking lot, it was this sense of community healing that we were all going through something together. It was really a very nice moment. And as I uh, thought about that later, as I was reading our scripture text for this week, uh, I thought about the healing that is mentioned in these texts. As we go back and and look at Numbers, uh, the first text that we heard from the Hebrew scripture this morning, um, as it describes for us this really bizarre uh, situation where Uh, Israel is out there, Uh, they are in the the wilderness, and they have come out of slavery in Egypt, and they're trying to get to what would be Israel. They're trying to get to the promised land. And so Moses is doing his best to lead these, these bitter, complaining people. And so while they're complaining, and there's this really bizarre aspect of God sending serpents, At least that's how they interpreted it, right? That God was so mad at them, he was sending serpents to bite them. And so they cry out, you know, we we need help. And so God says to Moses, I'm going to help you out with this. If you'll take uh, a serpent and put it up on a stick and post it in the ground, anybody who looks at that will be healed. So if you got bitten as an individual out there in the desert, if you got bitten by a snake, you could go and look at this pole with a snake wrapped around it and you would be healed by looking at that. You would experience healing. It would be like an antidote to the venom of the snake that is inside of you. You would experience healing in your body and you would be saved from this very terrible serpent. And as uh, we also looked at in John chapter 3, there is much there about healing. Nicodemus is struggling. There's something going on inside of Nicodemus. He he is a Pharisee. He is a member of a particular religious sect within uh, Judaism, and it's probably the same one Jesus would have been in uh, as well. He was probably more, more closely aligned to a Pharisee than he would have been a Sadducee or a Essene or really any other group. But Jesus has been teaching and saying things that Nicodemus has heard. And so Nicodemus is scared to go have a one-on-one with Jesus and get more information, at least when there's a crowd around. So he goes out in the middle of the night. He finds out where Jesus is staying. He knocks on the door and says, Jesus, can we just chat? A little bit. I've got some questions. And he says, sure. So they go and they have a conversation. And as, as they do this, uh, we would understand that they would have probably been on top of the house where it would have been cool. And so they're out there having a conversation. And, and so Nicodemus has some really big questions for him. How can I experience this life that you keep talking about? This eternal life, this new kingdom And Nicodemus, like all the others in his religion, they were looking for a new kingdom to come. They were looking for a Messiah to come and give them a real sense of life that was very different from the life of captivity and oppression they were experiencing to the Romans. And so he asked Jesus, how could this be? And he says, well, Nicodemus, you're going to have to be born again. He's like, what? What are you talking about? I've heard you say some interesting things, but that doesn't make any sense. Am I supposed to go back into my mother's womb uh, to be born again? And Jesus says, no, Nicodemus, you're still not getting it. Born of the Spirit, born of God, getting a brand new life, a real life. And then he says, Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him 
shall not perish, shall not have to go on living like you have been living, Nicodemus, but you'll have eternal life. God doesn't, didn't send the Son to condemn the world. Not at all. God loves the world. And God wants to save and heal the world. And so Nicodemus is hearing this and understanding that he could be saved, that he could be healed, that part of him that's just gnawing at him, knowing there has to be something more in life than what he was experiencing. That could be healed. I think we can identify with Nicodemus. I think we can identify with uh, the folks out there wandering around in the desert getting bitten by snakes and having to deal with all of the challenges of life. Because we too need healing, don't we? We need healing, whether it's physically, emotionally. By the way, uh, the psychiatrists and psychologists and others are saying that we're going to see an even greater rise in, in the mental health issues that are coming out of this pandemic. We're, we're not even at the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there, there is just so much more uh, trauma that we've all experienced on different levels because of what we've had to live with this past year. And we're going to continue to have to deal with those for years to come. So we need uh, healing emotionally and physically and spiritually. And we need that. I love the, the quote that's in the bulletin this morning that comes from the, the mystic uh, Rumi. He says, The wound is the place where the light enters you. Your wound, wherever you're wounded today, is where the light of God enters into you. It is not just a gaping sore. It is a portal by which God can enter into you and give you healing. And so we are to know that today, that, that God has provided us with healing. And it comes to us in Jesus. We can experience this healing in Jesus. It is the antidote. And, and later, as we get towards Easter here in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll see that God has uh, provided healing through Jesus. And we see Jesus on the cross, right? Just like that pole that was mounted in the desert with the snake on it, with the antidote to it. We see Jesus on the cross. And I think John is doing some things here, reminding his readers, the people in the church that he was writing to, that we've heard about something like this before. And so we can know that that Jesus can heal that which kills us and can give us eternal life. And by the way, eternal life here is not about heaven that's disconnected from space, I mean, from, from earth somehow. That's not it at all. That's not how they thought at all. It was about the age to come. It was about real life right here on earth, the kind of life God has always wanted people to have. And so he says, you, you don't have to perish, Nicodemus. He says the same thing to us. You don't have to, to live like you're dead in this world. You can have life, eternal life, right here in this moment. And this all comes through belief. Just as the people out in the desert, all they had to do was look at the snake and be healed, all we have to do is believe. And it's, it's not just thinking, oh, okay, I agree with that. I agree with what the Bible says or I agree with Jesus. It's not just belief in that way. It's belief by committing your life to it. And that's what Jesus was asking Nicodemus to do. Come out of the darkness, Nicodemus. Quit trying to go around and, and try to do things in seclusion. Get out in the open, get out in the light, and live in the light that God has given to you. And that is belief. It is connecting to Jesus in such a deep and wonderful way that you experience healing. That healing will come into your body, into your mind, and into your spirit. Well, healing is not just for us, is it? 
It's for other people. And just like I looked around and saw how other people were being healed by the vaccine that they were getting, God wants us to see that other people are to be healed too. It's not just about us. The serpent on the stick was for the nation of Israel. It was for for the whole nation, not just for them as individuals. There's no way that any of them would have thought, okay, this is just for me. That was for everybody. God wanted them all to be healed. And the same thing is true here in John chapter 3. For God so loved the world, the cosmos, the, the entire world, everything that God has made. It's not just God loving one religion. It's not just God loving one race. It's not about God just loving people. God loves creation, all of creation. And because of that love, that selfless, self-giving love that Jesus portrayed as he lived in this world is the same love that God has for all of us. And it is a, a love that doesn't condemn. It is a love that gives light and life. Martin Luther King Jr., as he went to... Um, his, uh, or his first sermon as he went to Dexter uh, Baptist Church uh, in Montgomery, Alabama. His first sermon there, he preached from this text, from John uh, chapter 3. It's a good one to start out with when you go to a new church. But he, this is what he said in that sermon. He says, God's love has breadth. It is a big love. It is a broad love. God's love is too big to be limited to a particular race. It is too big to be wrapped in a particularistic garment. It is too great to be encompassed by any single nation. He says, no, God is a universal God. It's for everybody. God's love is for us all. And that means God's healing is for us all. And we must know that. If you think about the vaccine, if you just were the only one to get your shot, it's not going to do a whole lot of good, is it? You might think, well, I I won't get COVID-19 because I have the shot and I've got this defense around me and I'm protected, but really that's not true, is it? Because other people around you who have not been vaccinated can give you COVID-19, especially when your vaccine wears off, maybe in a year or whenever they figure that out. But the whole idea is that we all get it, right? That we develop herd immunity because there are Uh, so many of us that have gotten it, that it diminishes the power of that terrible virus. And so it's not just about me getting it, it's about all of us getting it. And we must know that God's healing is for others too, and our world needs it, doesn't it? Our world is sick, isn't it? I mentioned uh, Yolanda's uh, son earlier and how he was gunned down not just gunned down by some random freak accident or somebody who was just out with a pistol shooting up, you know, driving down the street. That wasn't it. He was shot three times with an assault rifle. An assault rifle, a rifle that's used in warfare on the battlefield to not just wound someone, but to blow a big hole in them. We live in a sick world where these are all over, on our streets, in the hands of people who have no business carrying an assault weapon. At one point, they were banned. You couldn't, you couldn't get these in our nation. That's no longer the case because Groups like the NRA and others have said, no, everybody needs one of these. We live in a sick world where things like that happen. We live in a sick world where there 
is hatred, where people hate one another because of the color of their skin or because of their uh, socioeconomic status or because of what nation they live in or what religion they belong to or what their sexual orientation is. We live in a sick world where those kinds of things take place. We live in a sick world where the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. We live in a sick world where not everybody can have the same kind of access to health care. You think about all the, the ways that we are sick in our world. And we know that individually in our own lives as we have sin in our lives that reminds us of how sick we are. And yet God says to us, I have provided you with a remedy. Not just for you, but for you to share with other people. And this is where the good news comes in, right? Even in the midst of the darkness, even in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of all the craziness that happens around us, that there is good news. So say to somebody around you, if you're in here this morning, or if you're watching uh, on the computer, you can just say it out loud to yourself. Just say, there is some good news. I mean, you got to say it like you mean it. Hey, there's some good news. There you go. That's good. There is some good news. God's good news. God so loved the world, you, even you and me, that God did something about it, our sickness. And we have a role in the midst of all of that, and our role is to be healing agents, just like when we get vaccinated, we go tell other people where they can get vaccinated and how they can be vaccinated and why it's so important. We're to do that too with Jesus. We are to tell the world about Jesus and how much Jesus loves them. I love the song that Elena sang earlier, this little light of mine. Yeah, it's yours, but it's your neighbor's too, right? And you need to go and share that light and that love with them and to be healing agents of God. Well, this particular Sunday in Lent, the fourth Sunday of Lent, is also known as uh, Letary Sunday. And um, it is the pause in the midst of a, a long Lenten season, right in the middle of it, where we stop and we rejoice we focus on the joy of God, kind of like in Advent, right? On the third Sunday of Advent, it, it is the, the candle of joy, and we celebrate, even in the darkness, we know that the light is coming at Christmas. And the same thing is true in Lent. We're in the wilderness, right? We're suffering, and yet we know how the story ends. We can't help but stop in the midst of Lent and rejoice. Healing is on its way. We will be fully healed. As we go into this week, and as we get closer to Easter, may we experience that healing right now. And then may we share it with others. Let us pray.